This lesson is 1-2, et coins and order of operations. These vocabulary words are very important, so you should write them down. Simplify means to replace an expression with its simplest name or form. That can be something as simple as reducing a fraction. Two fourths equals one half, that would be simplifying. But simplifying also can be used as a universal term to just work through a problem. If I said a plus six, if a equals two, we would replace the a with a two, you would get two plus six equals eight. Eight is the simplest form. An exponent is a number that shows repeated multiplication. If I have three to the fourth, that means I'm going to repeat three four times. It literally means three times three times three times three. Three multiplied by itself four times. If we were to simplify that, we would multiply it out. Three times three is nine, three times three is nine, and nine times nine is 81. So the simplified version of three to the fourth is 81. The base is the number that is multiplied repeatedly. So in the, the power of three to the fourth, three is your base. Three is your base, and four is your exponent. The exponent is telling you how many times you are going to use three as a factor. The power is the base and the exponent of an expression in the form of a to the n. So, three is my base, four is my exponent, but the entire thing is called a power. Three being my base, four being my exponent, but the entire thing is called a power. To evaluate, you're simply going to substitute a given number in for a variable and then simplify. Like I did in your first example, if I have a plus 2 and I tell you that a is going to equal 5, we're simply going to place 5 into this equation. We have 5 plus 2 and that equals 7. That is evaluating. It's also sometimes referred to as simplifying. You may have heard the phrase PEMDOS. Please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. I prefer to use GEMDOS. GEMDOS stands for G, excuse my dear Aunt Sally, or whatever you want to put in for the letter G. I prefer G versus P because G stands for all grouping symbols instead of just parentheses. Grouping symbols come in forms of parentheses, brace brackets, braces, and you can have a various combination of these. You won't always just have parentheses. So it's important to understand that you will have other types of grouping symbols. A fraction bar is a form of a grouping symbol. It says do everything on the top, separate from everything on the bottom, and then divide. E stands for exponents, which means you are supposed to evaluate exponents second. M and D stand for multiplication and division. And this is where a lot of people have some trouble. You need to do whichever comes first from left to right as you read it. If I have 2 divided by 1 times 6, I am going to do this division before I do this multiplication because as I read from left to right, 2 divided by 1 comes first. The same thing happens with addition and subtraction. Whichever one comes first from left to right is the one you do first. Go in order. So, if we are going to evaluate an expression using the proper order of operations, do anything within grouping symbols first, then exponents, then multiply and divide, then add and subtract. Let's look at some examples. Here we have some problems in which they ask you to simplify, which means work it out as far as you can possibly work it out. Sometimes that means you will get an answer. Sometimes that means you'll get a variable with an equation and you'll get an algebraic expression that is simpler but not completely solved. Let's look at number one. If we look at number one, it says we're supposed to do parentheses or grouping symbols. We don't have any. Exponents, we don't have any of those either. Multiplication and division. Ah, we have this multiplication before we can do this addition. So I'm just going to simply write down my two, write down my addition sign. Five times three is 15. And now I have this. Now all I have to do is from left to right, evaluate this. Two plus 15 is 17. Always good to box or circle your final answer so everybody can find it and know what you get you. This is absolutely what you believe to be the final answer. Let's look at number two. If we look at number 
scratching, there are no grouping symbols, but we do have an exponent right here. So we need to do this first. So as I look at this problem, I'm just going to write down 3 times 6 minus 4 squared means 4 times 4, which means that's 16. It is not 8. Do not get in the bad habit of saying 4 times 2. It's 4 times itself. So there's a total of two of them. So this is 4 squared is 16 divided by 2. Now, we're done with the grouping symbols. We've dealt, dealt with the exponents. Now we need to do with multiplication and division from left to right. Here we have to multiply, and here we have to divide. We can do those separately as long as we remember to write this, multi this subtraction sign between them. 6 times 3 is 18. 16 divided by 2 is 8. And now I have 18 minus 8, which is 10. Please note, we always do math vertically. We don't do it horizontally. It gets very messy when you do it horizontally and is very hard to follow. Step by step, I put these little brackets in right here so you can see what I was doing. You can choose to do that or you do not have to do that. It's a personal preference. Let's look at problem number three. Now it's obviously quite a bit more complicated. And as you can see, we have several symbols of inclusion. So you might ask, which one do we do first? If you have more than one symbol of inclusion or grouping symbol, you need to do from the inside to the outside. So if we look at this, I'm going to write down the 4. I'm going to keep this bracket right here. 2 times 9 I can do. I'm going to write down. That's 18. I can keep this plus sign. I can do the 15 divided by 3. 15 divided by 3 is 5. But that's still in a parenthesis because I have to square it. I can leave the square outside the parenthesis. That is fine. So now simplified to this point, it looks like this. It looks like 4 bracket 18 plus 5 squared and my bracket. So now the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take and square my 5. So I'm going to leave my 4, keep my bracket, keep my 18 plus 5 squared, which is 25. Now I simply just need to add 18 and 25. And you will see that 18 plus 25 is 43. So I'm going to do this step next, which is 43. And I have to multiply that by 4. 43 multiplied by 4 is 172. So my final answer should be 172. You should not use a calculator to do this step. If you can't do it in your head, then do it off to the side of your paper. This step here should not be done with a calculator. Number four, here we have some symbols of inclusion or grouping symbols. I have two of them. So once again, I will work from the inside out. I can't do anything with the three, so I will copy it down. I can do something with the eight plus six. Eight plus six is 14, so I will just write that down, keep my division sign, keep this parenthesis, four squared is 16 minus 10. I still have parentheses. I have to do this one here. 16 minus 10 is 6. Keep this division sign. And I can do this multiplication right here. 3 times 4 is 12. 3 times 1 is 3 plus 1 is 4. So I have 42 divided by 6. 42 divided by 6 is 7. And I am done. If you do things by the proper order of operations, you should get the same answer as your neighbor. If you get different answers, then someone probably messed up the order of operations. To evaluate with order of operations, it's really important to understand that whenever you replace a variable, you probably should put it in parentheses. For example, if I have 4C, I don't want to write 42 because it doesn't mean 42. It means 4 times 2. So what I should do here is I should take 4 and replace the C with a 2 with using a parentheses so that I know it means multiplication minus 2 times d, which happens to be 5, and then divided by 2. Now I've replaced all my variables. Now I will simply do the order of operations. From left to right, I need to multiply or divide first. There's more, more multiplication. 4 times 2 is 8. Keep the subtraction sign, since I'm supposed to do the multiplication first. 2 times 5 is 10, divided by 2. Notice I'm not going to take this 5 and divide it by 2 first, because I have to multiply before I divide. So now, here, I'm not going to take 8 and subtract 10. That would be the wrong thing to do first because we don't do subtraction before we do division. Here's a division right there. 
So I'll write my 8 down, I'll write my subtraction. 10 divided by 2, it happens to be 5, and 8 minus 5 is 3. There's my final answer. Number 2 here. Again, substitute in your variables, the values for your variables, and use parentheses. So I have 40 minus d is 5, so I will have 5 squared plus c is 2 times 5 times 3. Now I simply need to evaluate. There are no grouping symbols. I do have an exponent I need to take care of, so 40 minus 5 squared is 25 plus, now the order that I multiply these does not matter because multiplication is commutative. 2 times 3 times 5 is the same as 5 times 3 times 2. So 2 times 5 is 10, 10 times 3 is 30. You could have done 5 times 3 is 15, 5 times 3 is 15, multiply that by 2, it's really gotten 30. Now all we have to do is add and subtract from left to right, so I'm going to simply do it from left to right. 40 minus 25 is 15, 15 plus 30 is 45, and we are done. As simple as that. The last types of problems we need to do are those where we're going to evaluate everything. And the thing we got to pay attention to is where that variable happens to be with the, in the exponent. If you'll notice here, this tells us that x times z, this entire quantity, is squared because the square is on the outside of the parentheses. This problem, the only thing that is squared is the z because the square is only next to the z. Be careful because those two, these are two different answers. When we finish this, you'll see why, what I mean. If here we're going to have x times z, so we're going to have 11 times 16, and we're going to take all that and we're going to square it. So we have to take 11 times 16 first, and 11 times 16 is 176. And then we're going to square 176. When we square 176, we should get 30,976. Again, do not use a calculator. Use paper, pencil off to the side if you need to. Problem 2 looks like it's the same, but it is not. Remember, the only thing squared is the z. So x happens to be 11, so we'll replace 11 times z, which is 16, 16 squared. And it's probably better if you put it in parentheses like this. So we have 11 times 16 squared. We have to square the 16 first. So we'll square the 16 first, and this will be 11 times 16 times 16 is 256. So we have 11 times 256. And when we multiply 11 times 256, we get 2,816. You should have learned order of operations in pre-algebra, so this should be a review for you for, most, for the most part.